So let's start with Scotland, who are understandably celebrating after qualifying for Euro 2024. Massive achievement, especially when you consider they've won five and lost one out of the six games they've played. The same record as Spain. Um, even though Scott McTominay had what looked like an absolute wonder strike disallowed miles, they still go through. Um, it was fair the goal was disallowed. Bit of a shame, mind you. But Scotland qualifying for a major tournament, that's big news, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. But to be honest... I think it's about par for the course because I think we underestimate yeah. Scotland quite a bit, actually. When you look at this squad, it's one of the most talented Scotland squads I've seen in my lifetime, for sure. Um, Steve Clark's an excellent coach, a really, really good manager as well. And he's got them really well organised and he's built a really good culture around that team. And we've seen that across the kind of British countries in particular. Maybe we see that more because we're kind of at hand with the home nations a bit more, so it's easier coverage. But it feels like Scotland is a really united camp at the moment. And we saw how far that took someone like Wales before. We saw that be the kind of bedrock of England's success for a while as well. And this Scotland team seems to be emulating that now because people seem to go to Scotland and in their international duty and just thrive. Like I look at someone like McGinn, for example, who when he was really struggling for club form under Gerrard, would go to Scotland and just bag at least a goal every game so you you see that these players actually really appreciate being part of that camp and it's a really talented camp as well so it's an excellent achievement for them but let's not forget this is a team that's in group a in the nation's league now it's not a new thing that scotland are good and it's thoroughly deserved that they're there it's not some sort of lucky qualification this was a difficult group and they've essentially knocked erling Haaland and martin erdegaard out of the euros and we know that that's that seems like yeah. a big statement, doesn't it? Massive statement, yeah. I think even going toe-to-toe with Spain, Dave, up to this point will be seen as a huge achievement. And whether they'll finish top of the group now, we don't know because there's a couple of tough games still to go. And I think Spain's running looks a, a little bit easier than Scotland's. But even to finish second would have been un- unthinkable, really, at the start of the campaign. So understandably thrilled. But how did Scotland get there, do you think? I think it definitely coincides. If you have a look at some of their main players, particularly this season, there's some some of their players having outstanding seasons and domestically. Obviously, look at Billy Gilmore. He's really kind of grown into his his role, obviously, at, at Brighton as well and stepping into there. He's, he's doing really well. And Miles My- mentions McGinn. Since, obviously, mm. Emery's come in, he's been absolutely mm. outstanding. Um, and it seems like a lot of these players have carried their club form into them. We mentioned, obviously, Harry, Aaron Hickey, who's doing really well at Brentford, obviously, unfortunately, injured now. Robertson, Liverpool. And Callum McGregor, who's, you know, such a great player um, for Celtic. And I just think what they've done is obviously outstanding, the achievement. But I also feel as though there's areas in that team that they can continue to improve. I think you mentioned there they've got, obviously, a couple more games. I think. The, the big thing is they're qualified now. There's, you know, I think a bit of relief there in terms of the pressure. Uh, they've obviously had some untimely injuries. Obviously mentioned Robertson and uh, Hickey have both had, looks like they've had a couple of bad injuries, um, which is obviously ideal, but it's probably come at the right time for them, really. Obviously now they've qualified. Um, but it also gives opportunities to some of the younger players that are, are going to come in. And I definitely think they probably need to look... Uh, more in the attacking areas. Obviously, there's mentions about players who are switching allegiances. Obviously, the mentions of Harvey Barnes, Elliot Anderson's another one we mentioned as well. Um, but I do feel like they need to get a source of goals probably from elsewhere. They've been a little You've bit... You've got goal well, machine Scott McTominay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, obviously, you know, he's been absolutely outstanding in this campaign with his, you know, his, his input in terms of goals. But I do like Shea Adams, but I just feel like... They need something else in there and whether they can find that um, that source of goals from elsewhere. Um, I think it's a lot to go into a major competition relying on just Scott Yikes. McTominay, despite the, the saviour that he's been, you know, many a time, particularly in, you know, for, for club and country of late. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's exciting, obviously. You know, it's the last few years we mentioned before this that, It was probably, you know, Ireland and Wales. It's been a long time since Scotland have been in this position. And really, I think you saw it against England. It it feels like they've got a real head of steam building around the momentum Mm. they're carrying at the moment. And I think that's why you want them to finish strong in this qualifying comp. comp Okay, they've you know they've qualified, but if they can get a couple of wins out of these last two games. Mm. That would be excellent yeah. for them. It's difficult to know what Scotland's level is as well because they've only been tested a few times in the last year or so, obviously against England, um, which had nothing riding on it necessarily. But 
England kind of dealt with them quite comfortably. And obviously the game against Spain earlier in the week, they lost. Um, again, small margins because McTominay's goal was disallowed. But Miles, if you're looking at uh, Scotland's team and the squad now and you think about Euro 2024, what would you say is a realistic ambition for them? Because, you know, it's a big tournament now, isn't it? Do you reckon mm. they've got a chance of, of progressing past the, the group stages at least? That would be huge for them because I think it would be the first time in their history that they managed to do that as well. So what an achievement that would be. But yeah, I, th- I think they have been tested, to be honest. That We've seen them get a result against Spain already in this mm. qualifying uh, and Norway. So I think it's really easy to kind of underestimate what the qualifying process has done but you saw them rise up through the Nations League as well so this is a consistent thing and the adaptability of someone like Steve Clark who is quite a defensive coach actually but has looked at someone like Matomine for example and moved into a more attacking position and seen real benefits for it let's not forget that when they were in their last qualifying campaign McTominay was playing as like a centre-back as mm. part of a, a back five. Yeah. So to move him up the pitch shows that Clark is identifying what the strengths in that squad are really well now. And the squad is very good. As a midfield, I think they're really, really strong. And yeah, the Spain game was quite fine margins. There are a lot of opportunities for Spain and Alvaro Morata will miss a lot of opportunities. You know that. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a shame for them to lose it, but I think it was probably a fair result in the end. But like Dave says... They just want to ride this wave now and carry the momentum into the tournament. And with the new format, it'll all depend on the look of the draw, really. But they could easily get out of the group. And then you never know. Once it gets to the knockout football, yeah. the culture around your team is such a big part of it. We saw that with Wales was getting to the semifinals. On paper, they're not as talented a squad as some of the bigger European nations that we're used to as footballing names. But when they've got the kind of footballing nous and kind of know-how that that midfield has got and a coach like Steve Clark, a company with a really harmonious dressing room, they could go, who knows where they could get to in the Euros. But I wouldn't write them off by any no. stretch. 